subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Electroconvulsive therapy, in which a small electric current is passed through the brain causing a seizure, is now used much less often than it was in the middle of the last century. But controversially it is now being used in the US and some other countries as a treatment for children who exhibit severe, self-injuring behavior. 17-year-old Jonah Lutz is severely autistic. He's also prone to outbursts of violent behavior, in which he sometimes hits himself repeatedly. His mother, Amy, is convinced that if it wasn't for electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, he would now have to be permanently institutionalized for his own safety, and the safety of those around him. The use of ECT featured famously in the 1975 Hollywood movie, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, starring Jack Nicholson. Set in a mental institution, the Oscar-winning film cemented most people's view of ECT as barbaric. But Amy describes the modern version of the therapy as little short of miraculous. ECT has been transformative for Jonah's life and for our life, she says. We went for a period of time, for years and years, where Jonah was raging, often multiple times a day, ferociously. The only reason he's able to be at home with us, is because of ECT. It's estimated that one in ten severely autistic children like Jonah violently attack themselves often causing serious injuries ranging from broken noses to detached retinas. No one really knows why. Some theories link self-injuring behavior to anxiety caused by an overload of sensory signals, others to frustration as the autistic child struggles to communicate. Amy and husband Andy tried countless traditional treatments using medication or behavioral therapy before finally turning to ECT, a treatment that first began to be used on children like Jonah a decade ago, in parts of the U.S. Each session alleviates his symptoms for up to 10 days at a time, but it's not a cure. Jonah's doctor, Charles Kellner, ECT director at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, is so convinced it's effective and safe that he allows Amy to witness the procedure and the BBC to film it. Professor Kellner says the best way to overcome the negative image of ECT portrayed in popular culture is to show people what modern ECT is really like, and show them the results with patients like Jonah. Jonah is one of a few hundred children in the U.S. to receive the controversial treatment. He has had about 260 ECT sessions since the age of 11. There's a lot of interesting new neural imaging research showing that ECT actually reverses some of the brain problems in the major psychiatric illnesses, Kellner explains, as he makes final checks on the wiring around Jonah's temples. We don't know exactly why it works in people with autism and superimposed mood disorders, but we think it probably re-regulates the circuits in the brain that are deregulated because of autism. The modern treatment is carried out under general anesthetic, with muscle relaxants to prevent violent convulsions. At the flick of a switch, Kellner administers just under an amp of electric current in a series of very short pulses. Jonah's body begins to shake as the current induces a seizure, ECT specialists think this may reset the malfunctioning brain. The convulsions last for about 30 seconds. Amy is unperturbed by what she sees. If a doctor says they need to cut open your child's chest to conduct life-saving surgery, you would allow it. That is more barbaric yet we accept it, she says. Within an hour Jonah is fully alert. He and his mother head out of the hospital and on to the New York street to find an ice cream parlor.